gave Ayyub السلام, large estate, land, property, wealth, agriculture, you name it. He was an entrepreneur in every sense of the word. Allah also gave him many children, boys and girls. Some historians and mufassirun say that he had 7 to 14 children, mixed boys and girls. But he had lots of children, big family that supported him. Ayyub salam was very handsome, and so was his wife. And he was a very well-known person to the entire tribe and community, very respected and honored and revered. Everybody grew accustomed to Ayyub salam being a man who was blessed by God. But unfortunately, the majority of people did not understand what it means to be blessed. You see, the majority of people assumed that Ayyub salam lived all this time with all this wealth and blessings. It meant that Allah loves him and has chosen him. And based on that, the people trusted him and loved him and thought well of him. It is said that he lived for about 70 years with all this blessing. In the time of the Prophet Ayyub السلام, a Prophet of Allah, he was sent to the children of Israel as well. He is a child from one of the children of Jacob, of Yaqub السلام. He's a grandchild of Yaqub السلام, or a great-grandchild from his bloodline. Ayyub السلام, was one of those sent from the children of Israel, the brothers of Yusuf السلام. And the example that Allah gives us about Job, Ayyub, is an incredible example of patience when it comes to losing your loved ones, people isolating you and accusing you without you doing anything wrong. And number three, your health. I have to add a fourth thing actually. He was tested with his wealth. And I have to add a fifth thing if you want as well, which was a side effect of it all. And he was tested with his own honor, his wife. And Allah mentions Ayyub to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to help him when he is going through calamities and hardships. One day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test Ayyub السلام, to be a role model to all those to come to the end of time. And also to show us the understanding of blessings and how wrong his people were, so that we can take heed and examples from it. The first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to Ayyub as stated in the Quran is that he took away all of his wealth. We don't know exactly how he took it away. Some Mufassirun, interpreters of the Quran, say that his crops burnt out, they burnt by the heat of the, of the weather, locusts ate them, the land dried and died, he lost his wealth as a result and became bankrupt. So he lost all of his wealth. Secondly, his children died one after the other. Now the Quran does not specifically say that his children died, but later on in the verses to come, it tells you, it gives you a hint that he had lost his children. We don't know if they died or they went astray. Some ulama, some scholars say, the minority of them assume that they went astray. They lost their deen as a result of their father's poverty. And they too assume that their father's blessing had gone because God was angry at him. The other version, which is the more reliable one, and it's more of an Israelite tradition, that his children died one by one. So he lost his children. And he lost his wealth. If that wasn't enough, he started to get sick. And from the context of the verses in the Quran, we understand 
that most likely his sickness was a disease in his skin. His skin, Allahu alam what kind of a disease it was, but it was a type of disease which made his skin flake and fall off. But it was so severe that you can see everything under his skin. His meat was exposed, his muscles were exposed, his body was exposed. And you know when you don't have skin, you've got no protection. Anything that touches it could infect it, could die from it. It's immense pain. So his skin started to fall off. And he stayed like that for a long time. Before you know it, the first thing that happened to him was his own people who used to love him, honor him, and revere him started to slowly abandon him because they didn't understand the meaning of blessing. They thought if you have wealth and health and all that, it means God loves you. You don't have it, it's taken away from you. You must have done something terrible that God is, you know, and thought he had been cursed. The only one that was left around him was one person, his wife. But this wife was extremely loyal to her husband and did not abandon him for a single second. Nor did she assume anything negative about him even though the whole world had turned against him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions her in the Quran, not by name, but as, as his wife, and therefore she is a virtuous woman of great honor and respect. Because of her immense struggles and patience, that was something that deserves her mention in the Quran, which we recite till the end of time. Time passed, and she had to start working to provide for herself and her husband. She used to work at people's houses and clean it up as a servant maid. And one day, the poverty got really bad. And it wasn't even enough to look after them. She wasn't getting many jobs. So, unfortunately, well, you can't blame her. Her emotions took over one day. And while she was sitting, tending to her husband, Ayyub, she said something. She said, Ya Ayyub, you're a prophet of Allah. You've been in this sickness for so long. At this moment, the Mufassirun say that he was about seven years in his sickness. She said, why don't you just ask Allah to cure you or to lessen the sickness on you? Are you being a prophet and a messenger and a role model? He said to her, oh my wife, how many years did I live in health and wealth? She said, 70 years. He said, I am too embarrassed to ask Allah until 70 years this way has passed as well. Ayyub salam said that to her. So she left. One day as she was returning, there is a, a narration in Bidaw al Nihayah and also by Al Tabari. He says that the shaitan came to her in the form of a man. And Satan said to her, Why don't you go and ask him? That it's enough what you guys are going through. How, look what he has done to you. You are now a servant maiden. And he started to play with her mind. During that vulnerable time. So she went to Ayyub salam, And because of her intense emotions. She said to him. Isn't it enough here Ayyub what we've gone through? Just ask Allah. But this time she asked it with an attitude. And she didn't mean it. So Ayyub salam, Afraid. Because he's a prophet of Allah, but his wife says this. He said to her, Wallahi, if Allah cures me, I will whip you 100 whips for that statement. That statement is a statement of rebellion against God's order and decree. Now, obviously, that wasn't nice of Ayyub to say that. But it tells us that the prophets of God are human as well. And when he said that, it seems that he got affected by that emotional burst from himself. And when he saw what his wife was doing, he got a bit upset about himself and the situation. One day, she came to bring him some food and she used to wear a bandana on her head or a hijab, scarf. And one day as she was bringing the food, she was wearing a bandana, it fell off. And he saw that she was bold. She was shaving her hair and selling her hair to get money for it. He felt now that his own honor is being affected by this. 
Now this was not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The emotion build up was a human reaction. And it was shaitan's whispers. And so this negativity was starting to show. Ayyub alayhi salam became afraid. For what? He became afraid for their own values and their own principles to be lost. So one day, Allah mentions in the Quran when he finally made his dua. Allah said, we bestowed the same wisdom, judgment and knowledge upon Ayyub. Recall when he cried to his Lord, behold, disease has struck me and you are the most merciful of those that are merciful. In another verse in the Quran, Ayyub salam says, O oh my Lord, the shaitan has touched me with harm, tiredness and torture. What is this tiredness and torture? It is the well-being, the mind, the emotions. Subhanallah, in not one verse did Ayyub even say, Oh Allah, cure me. He just said, You are the most merciful of all those who give mercy. And that's the best way to ask Allah for anything. As a result, Allah says, we accepted his prayer and removed the affliction from him. And we not only restored him his family, but as many more with them as a mercy from us and as a lesson to the worshippers. What happened was that his wife came into the house and she saw a young man sitting in the corner. And she asked him, have you seen that man here who is sick and old? And he said to her, Wayhaki, how could you? It is me, your husband, Ayyub. Allah has returned me back to my youthful age. And then Allah returned her to her youthful age and brought him his wealth and children. As for his oath, when he swore that he's going to whip his wife, Allah mentions this in the Quran. Allah says, and we said to him, take in your hand a bundle of rushes and strike with it and do not break your oath. Indeed, we found him steadfast. How excellent a servant of ours he was. Indeed, he constantly turned to his Lord. So, he took a bunch of small straws or branches or whatever it was. And what he did with them, he got 100 of them and he just threw them on his wife's back. It doesn't do anything to you. And so he expiated his oath. What happened there? There is a hadith in uh, Sahih Bukhari. Where Ayyub alayhi salam, he says that Ayyub alayhi salam was washing himself, he took off his clothes and he was washing himself, when locust-like creatures, lo locust-like gold, so they weren't real, it was just gold, but it started to appear in abundance in front of him. So while he was having a shower, he didn't bother putting his clothes on because he was alone of course, and then he started to pick them up, and he grabbed his other clothes, instead of wearing them, he started putting the, the locust, the gold into his, into his clothes. And it sounds almost unusual for a prophet to want all this gold. What, you know, what's wrong? Is he salvaged? Is he greedy? Obviously not. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him in this, he says, Haven't I given you enough blessings, Ya Ayyub? And Ayyub salam replied, Oh yes, my Lord. But no one can get enough of your blessings because it's from you. I enjoy when you give me the blessings. And he gave him his wealth back. And as much as he had, double the amount. Everything came back. And so that's the story of Ayyub alayhi salam. Then a little bit of time passed and another prophet came along. From the progeny and the bloodline of the children of Israel as well. His name was, or his nickname was Dhul Kifin. 